Hey guys, if smelling great is a top priority, Scentbird has an awesome special for you. If you want to try a new clone at 30% off your first month's order, use the code SAMGOLD30 in the link below. With Gronkowski finally hanging up his cleats and Josh Gordon missing in action, the Patriots desperately needed a receiver to help fill that void. They signed Demaryius Thomas this offseason, but as he's still returning from an Achilles injury he suffered in December, they needed to go elsewhere. At the end of the first round, they took Nikhil Harry out of Arizona State. Now, if there is one thing you have to know about Harry, it's his ability to create yards after the catch. He truly comes alive anytime he has the ball in his hands. This play against UT San Antonio showcases that ability. After he caught a hitch route off the left sideline, he broke not one, not two, and not even three, but four separate tackle attempts to bring him down. He then escaped up the sideline and ran in for the score. It's these type of plays that really demonstrate his value. If your average receiver can get two or three yards on a screen pass, Harry will spin forward and get you five or six. It's almost like clockwork, where he'll consistently chip away at defenses anytime he touches the ball. While this trade is arguably his best quality, he does a fantastic job of attacking the ball out of the air. I like how he combines his hand strength with good body positioning. He uses it to box out defenders and he makes contested catches. He did this in the end zone too. I like how even though he isn't the best at creating natural separation with his route running, he still has the capacity to bring in balls while he's covered. I mean, look at some of these catches, especially this one against USC. He caught it while diving backwards, pretty much imitating the Odo Beckham Jr. catch. This is super impressive, and it clearly showed his upside to create big plays. Now, as I briefly mentioned a moment ago, Harry isn't the best at creating separation with his route running. He's good at vertically stemming a route at a defender in off-main coverage, but I don't think he fully understands how to create true hesitation at the top. I feel like since he has a very upright and vertical posture, it takes away this ability. From my film study, he doesn't fully create the two-way ghost that you want. In my opinion, he needs to do a better job of attacking the defender's opposite shoulder before he breaks, as this will help him create more openings. If you look back to the start of his route, indecision sometimes killed him before the snap even began. For example, anytime he was asked to run a goal line fade, he would take way too many steps on the release. He would stand there topping his feet in place up to six or seven times, when all he has to do is go. I feel like perfecting a one-two stutter step release will drastically help his game. Based on my tracking, Harry also had issues running fade routes on the sideline. I feel like when he dealt with press as he was rounding the corner, all a defender had to do was use their links to box him out. He doesn't do a good job of threading horizontally his breaks or varying his speed on his releases. Either of these two improvements could help his routes become more dynamic as he can be a bit of a one-speed runner at times. I feel like based on his skill set, you can't ask him to run streak routes in your offense. That's just not what he's good at. Now, it's very possible he'll develop a good relationship with Tom Brady in order to run back shoulder fades. Those would certainly fit his skill set, but again, I wouldn't want the fade to be one of his main routes in Foxborough. One thing that I did like about Harry's route running is that he can crisply break a route with minimal steps. With small improvements by not drifting up the field after he breaks, Harry would be excellent on digger slant routes where he attacks the center of the defense. I feel like he has a good grasp of body positioning and using his size to shield the ball, so I imagine the shallow cross and drive concept will both be very good play designs for him at the next level. Before we get to his pro comparison, I wanted to get through a few more notes that I feel are important for you to fully understand as a player. The first thing that I have to say is that while Harry did make some pretty spectacular catches, he also had a drop rate of 7.6% this season. That's roughly average, but it does happen on occasion. I'm not too worried about it overall because I think he's plenty capable of making the big play though. The next thing that I want to note is that Harry was a ferocious run blocker at ASU at times. He would bully cornerbacks and knock them on their asses. He would burst off the line of scrimmage and make defenders pay. It was a lot of fun to watch. I feel like this element to his game, while not as important as receiving ability, will still be very valuable to the Patriots offense. The last thing that I want to point out is that Harry ran a pretty good 40-yard dash at 4.53 based on his size. According to Spark Testing, he ended up around the 75th percentile for athletes in his class. While that certainly checks the boxes, I honestly would never have guessed that he ran anywhere near that fast on the field. He seemed slower and much more in control unless he hit the open space. I say this just to point out to you that he realistically won't be burning safeties using his speed next season. That's just not a big part of his game. Overall, when I look at him as a prospect, Harry reminds me of Allen Robinson. Robinson, who was 6 foot 2 and 220 pounds, showcased a very similar run after the catch ability as well as a leaping ability to make big plays. Harry can also do the same thing. In my opinion, and when you add all these traits together, 
I gave Harry a mid-second round grade. Taking him at the 32nd pick is just about the earliest I would have considered him. However, when you look at his skill set, you can immediately tell he'll be a good fit in Josh McDaniel's offense. They should give him plenty of free releases, lining up from stacked looks, and by using my motions. This should get the most out of his skill set. As I kind of alluded to this earlier, Harry shouldn't be the X receiver in this offense. But in my opinion, he still has the potential to be a very good big slot receiver for this team. In that role, Harry can be moved around the field and scheme for, while also he can be very effective inside his run blocker. To wrap up this video, I feel like in a few short years, Harry could turn into a PPR nightmare in the Patriots offense. His skill set is very multiple, and I bet that's exactly what the Patriots saw in him. Harry has the potential to create some big plays. You then add in his double move potential, and New England will immediately benefit from his impact. Alright guys, if you're like me, you know that clone is nice, but you have no idea what to get, then my friends at Scentbird have a great product for you. They have a monthly clone service that allows you to try a new scent each month. It's a very cost-effective way to test out all 600 of their partner products. Plus, with thousands of reviews, it makes picking each scent easy. Every month, they mail you a travel size amount that lasts over 120 sprays. Yes, in a 30-day month, that's 4 sprays each day. This is much better than your sample vial that you grab at the mall. I love the convenience, and since I travel for work, they make it super easy to test out each scent. Over the past couple weeks, I tested out 3 different clones. I grabbed Aqua from Bulgari, which is a nice oceanic citrus smell perfect for dating. Then I tried the one from Men from Dolce & Gabbana. This made me feel super manly as it smelled like amber and tobacco. Finally, I tried Arrows from Versace. This is great for all day use at the office, and it has hints of vanilla and cedar that age as well as the day goes on. Again, if you want to mix things up but don't want to pay $50 for a brand new bottle of clone, I highly recommend giving Semper a chance. You can get 30% off on your first month's order if you use my promo code SAMGOLD30 below. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really do appreciate it. Also, if you want to see what I'm working on next, you can follow me on Twitter at SamuelRGold.